stemming from a sound hadith collected by Imam Bukhari. And this hadith is of a great importance. The Almighty Allah says, ما تقرب إلي عبدي بشيء أحب إلي مما افترضته عليه Who's going for Hajj this year? Raise your hand if you are. How many? No, 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 no. Not the Malaysian style, the Nigerian style. Jump. Stand up. How many? One, two. Huh? Masha Allah. I want to tell you one thing. Americans have easy access to go for Hajj every year if they want to. Unlike you guys here, which is maybe once in a lifetime. You have the blue passport, you have the cash, you can always go for Hajj, even twice a year. <laughs> I don't know how, but you know, this is what they think. Anyway, I met some people who say, Sheikh, I know I'm gonna miss a lot. Because I didn't study very well how to perform Hajj. But I came this time to check it out. The next time I will do it properly. Wallahi, I'm not lying to you. I'm not making it up. Some people think because they can afford it, you know, that this time it's okay. Let me tell you the meaning of this hadith to answer this misconception. The Almighty Allah says, Nothing, nothing, nothing my servant can do to come close to me better than fulfilling what I have ordained upon him. Yani, meaning, i.e., in other words, if Allah bless you to perform Hajj, the first time is known as Hajjatul Islam. This is the pillar, the fifth pillar of the deen, mashallah. If you're lucky enough, and Mufti Mink and myself know uh, an uncle and a senior brother, a lovely person, who have performed Hajj 54 consecutive times. And he is about 95 years old, mashallah. Mashallah. Only during COVID, where no one was allowed, he skipped this time. Otherwise, mashallah, 54 Hajj. Not everyone is as fortunate as him. But we'll take him as example. The very first Hajj, is Hajjatul Islam. This is the Faridah. The remaining 53 Hajj, if we put the first Hajj in one part of the scale and 53 other Hajj in the other part, the one Hajj would outweigh the 53. You know why? Because this is the pillar. This is the Faridah. And what comes next is voluntary. Allah wanted you to perform Hajj only. So likewise, if a person messed up his fasting and he's trying to make it up by voluntary fasting, no, take care of the mandatory fasting first. And subhanAllah, all what is mandated is easy and affordable and average person can do it, whether the prayers of fasting or umrah or whatever. Alhamdulillah. Then there is an area of competition. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Mukaffin, وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ Concerning heaven, concerning what Allah has prepared in it for the believers, let the competitors compete. In which area? The nawafil. The superregatory acts of worship, extra prayers, extra fasting, Monday, Thursday, 13th, 14th, and 15th, the 10th of Muharram, the 9th of Dhul Hijjah, it's six white days, you name it. Every other day, if you can, the more you offer voluntary acts of worship, the more you come closer to Allah. Until you achieve the following status, which is the Almighty Allah says, until I love him. And once I love him, I become his sight with which he sees, his hearing with which he hears, his hands with which he strikes, his feet. What does it mean that Allah becomes my sight or your sight, my hearing or your hands? What does it mean? It means normally when I'm browsing on the social media and there is a movie clip or there is something, human nature, you like to see it. But if you're loved by Allah, He will distract your attention. You don't want to see it. You don't want to hear music. 
The issue now is not about halal and haram or whether it's disputed or shubha or not. No. You belong to him. He will only make you do what he loves. So waking up to pray tahajjud is piece of cake, is loved by you. Why? Because he loves you. He invites you. Reading the entire Quran once every three days is a piece of cake. Why? You belong to him. He will make you love what he loves. Masha'Allah. It's all about making an effort. 